We shall be reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 21. The Gospel of John, chapter 21. The Gospel of John. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and in this way he showed himself. Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathanael of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We are going with you also. They went out and immediately got into the boat, and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning had now come, Jesus stood on the shore. Yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said to them, Children, have you any food? They answered him, No. And he said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast, and now they were not able to draw it in because of the multitude of fish. Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he had removed it, and plunged into the sea. But the other disciples came in the little boat, for they were not far from land, but about two hundred cubits, dragging the net with fish. Then as soon as they had come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid on it, and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish which you have just caught. Simon Peter went up and dragged the net to land, full of large fish, 153, and although there were so many, the net was not broken. Jesus said to them, Come and eat breakfast. Yet none of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you, knowing that it was the Lord? Jesus then came and took the bread and gave it to them, and likewise the fish. This is now the third time Jesus showed himself to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to him again, a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Most assuredly I say to you, when you were younger, you girded yourself and walked where you wished. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands, and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish. This he spoke, signifying by what death he would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said to him, Follow me. Then Peter, turning around, saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following, who also had leaned on his breast at the supper, and said, Lord, who is the one who betrays you? Peter, seeing him, said to Jesus, But Lord, what about this man? Jesus said to him, If I will that he remain till I come, what is that to you? You follow me. Then this saying went out among the brethren that this disciple would not die. Yet Jesus did not say to him that he would not die, but, If I will that he remain till I come, what is that to you? This is the disciple who testifies of these things, and wrote these things, and we know that his testimony is true. And there are also many other things that Jesus did, which if they were written one by one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ performed many miracles, innumerable. He is the Christ. But the greatest miracle of all was the one He did after His resurrection, to destroy and crush the works of the devil in the life of man. Not one work, for example, blindness, paralysis, or even death. All the works of the devil in the life of man. But, my beloved brethren, the Gospel of Jesus Christ, especially the Gospel according to John, which is directed to the Church of Christ, doesn't finish with the resurrection and being reborn. It has an important continuation. 
they received the disciples Holy Spirit when they were reborn yes their lives did change fear left sorrow left joy came the glory of Christ came into their lives the presence of God came faith of blessedness came yes but the work of God doesn't finish here for the Church of Christ here it starts now a new life starts now he must give them another kind of spirit remember my brethren let's remember Caleb Caleb with Joshua it was them who when Moses sent to spy on the land he sent them in the most difficult region where the Anakim were and the great fortified cities were so all the hearts were dissolved crushed apart from the heart of Joshua and Caleb who had another kind of spirit a spirit of complete faith and especially they were wholly united with God and as the Bible says they followed wholly the Lord of course the unbelief of the ten delayed the work of God and that generation which believed in the ten in the voices of the ten they remained out of the promised land apart from those two Caleb and Joshua who after 40 years were found again in the same regions there in the Mount of Hebron now Caleb is 85 years old 40 years have gone by and five in conquering so they can enter a lot of things happened in those years to Caleb there was apostasies resistance idol worshipping even a lot of things happened in those years Caleb you can't see him anywhere in this he sits there totally connected with the Lord and he is waiting when he will enter why because he has a promise a promise which is personal from God to him you will conquer Mount Hebron this land will be yours Caleb and 45 whole years went by all who are next to him are a 20 year age difference from him younger the oldest is around 65 years old they're all young before him but when the time came Caleb said to Joshua I am 85 years old but I have the same strength that I had when I was 40 because I had the same faith you see my brethren how close power is to faith faith gives power power to man and again the giants are there and again the cities are fortified and tall but I will enter says Caleb because God told me this and even though Moses handed out the land by lots the only tribe who took received her inheritance from a promise was the tribe of Caleb the tribe of Judah which received Jerusalem which God had chosen they didn't know yet about Jerusalem of course they didn't know about the city of David they didn't know about the preaching of the gospel in Jerusalem they knew nothing of all this but God knew everything and God fulfills his word through the faith of simple men the main characteristic of Caleb was that he had another spirit and he followed holy God it is a spirit the apostolic spirit it is a spirit which wins the promises of God it is a spirit of power and faith another kind of spirit and this spirit it is necessary now for Peter James John Thomas to receive because their work isn't for them to be Christians mere Christians remaining in a simple Christian life 
but they must become Christians, apostles of Jesus Christ for the will of God. The church in which they serve must not be a church which lives, but must be a church which burns with the fire of the Holy Spirit. Their way and their Christian lives must not be a Christian life which floats, but it must be a life in the power and the revelation and the mission of the Holy Spirit, which Peter hasn't got yet, nor John, nor James, nor Thomas, or the other disciples have. The result, once their lives were filled with joy, Peter now says, let's go fishing. But a great change must take place now. And this great change Christ must make. And my beloved brethren, the message from God is that we are waiting and asking for this great change in which Christ will do, giving us another kind of spirit, a new spirit, spirit of apostleship. This spirit Peter had in the first apostolic church, and James, and Caleb, and Joshua had it. But this spirit, the new apostolic church must have now, the church of the rapture. And this did not happen only to the disciples, but to all the anointed servants of God. Paul was like that also. The Lord visited him. He was reborn, baptized with the Holy Spirit the first day when the Ananias prayed for him. He went three years to Arabia. And there Christ taught him the word of God. Another four years he stayed in his country of Tarsus, waiting for the Lord. And then Barnabas came and he brought him to Antioch. And they were there, teachers, prophets, and they served the church very nicely indeed until Christ came to make the great change. Give unto me Barnabas and Paul for the work in which I prepared for them to do. The same happened to all of them. And Stephen and Philip, they were deacons in the church and they served the tables until Christ came and gave them another spirit. One of them, Stephen, preached with the power of the Holy Spirit and they stoned him. And the other one, from persecution, was found in Samaria. The church of Christ, my beloved brethren, must not be a small church in the neighborhood. The church of Christ of the later days will be the church of the world. I don't know how this will happen, but I do know who will do it, Christ. I don't know when, I know nothing, but I do know with all assuredness that the time will come when Christ will give another kind of spirit to the church. A spirit that's full of glory. A spirit which will follow holy the Lord. Holy the Lord, because now a new invitation will be given to Peter. Once he was fishing, Christ said to him, follow me. And he abandoned everything and followed Christ. And now again, he's fishing with the other disciples. That night, the Bible says, they caught not even one fish. And again, in their failure, Christ will visit them. And another time he was fishing all night, he caught nothing. And when he gave his boat to Christ, and Christ preached, and the sermon was finished, and Peter heard and accepted the word of God, then Christ said to him, Take your boat out. And his boat was filled, and James' boat, and John's boat, and all the boats were filled with fish. Now again, that's why, my brethren, if our boat is empty, let's be happy today. If, if your boat is empty, be happy, brother. The Lord is coming. 
glory, glory to the name of Jesus. This is the will of God. The empty boat. Let it not give you sadness or sorrow. The empty boat may not annoy you or disappoint you or afflict you or give you fear. Give importance elsewhere to He who will stand across from you and will talk to you. Hey, children! Christ calls out. Have you any food? They don't know who He is yet. They don't know who He is because He's not revealed to them as a risen Christ. He doesn't want them to see Him by appearance and for them to believe in that way. He wants them to believe by hearing and to believe. To Thomas He had said, Because you saw me, Thomas, you believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now the preaching of the Gospel and the invitation of Christ isn't anymore by appearance. Search me, touch me. Look, I have flesh, bones, and spirit. Now, he's across from them. Children, have you any food? And they answered him, No. Until now, no. All night we haven't caught a thing. They did not recognize him, but he said to them something which was well known to them. Cast the net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. Cast the net on the right side of the boat. It was dawning and they did. And the net was filled with fish. The Bible says 153, the exact number. They all started to be suspicious. John said, It's the Lord. They did not recognize him, but they did recognize his voice. It's their shepherd. They heard his voice. Peter plunges into the sea. Once he was dressed, the others come out. And they saw a nice image. Someone had lit a fire, had a large fish, and was cooking it for them. And since they all ate from that fish, it must have been a big fish. No one dared ask him, Who are you? But from his voice, from his words, from his words, his word, they were convinced that it was Christ, the risen Christ, from His Word. They saw a face, but they knew that it was Christ who was talking to them. We thank God for that, my brethren. Bring some of the fish, Peter had dragged 153 large fish, chosen fish. Come, let's eat breakfast. They were speechless. Something was happening. They did eat. The heart of Peter had flooded with joy. Especially, it has flooded with love. It is the Lord. And when Christ comes and you understand it, your heart is flooded with love. And my brethren, the change starts. The change of Simon, the son of Jonah, into Apostle Peter. 
Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? The goal is one, the purpose is one, to convince him, to follow him wholly. Holy, totally. That is the total goal of Christ. To give him the spirit of Caleb, but of the New Testament. To make him a man, apostle of Christ, in which Christ will send him and he will go. For Christ to call him and he will come. He is now in a changeover, Christ will create in Peter a present but also a future. In the end he will tell him, and we'll see this from the beginning, when you were younger Peter, you girded yourself and walked where you wished. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish. In between there will be a life. Now, from this moment and after, follow me, and you will follow me until they will gird you and take you where you do not wish to go. A new period is starting in the life of Peter, different from what it was, and different from what it will be in the end. How it was before, Peter did whatever he wanted. What it will be, people will do to him whatever they want to do. And what he will be found in now, Christ will do whatever he wants to do in his life. He will follow Christ. He will have Lord, a true Lord. He will have a God, a true God. He will have guidance and leadership of the Holy Spirit, truly. His Christian life will not be easy, soft, in goodness of man, in joy and glorification. His life will be in work, apostolic work, in which he will see only the face of Christ by faith. He will hear only the word of Christ by faith. And he will live only the life of Christ by faith. A new present. A new period is opening before Peter. And it will stop until the fulfillment of time will come according with the will of God. And by the force of man. But this period is totally different from what he lived in so far when he was young until that moment. Until that moment, he did follow Christ, but he never stopped being a fisherman. By words, he said, I'll follow you wherever you might go, and I'll die with you, Lord. But a few hours went by, he said that at night, but in the morning, he had denied him already three times. When Christ called him, after his resurrection, he found him weeping bitterly from sorrow. Not acknowledging himself how he fell in this trap and he denied Christ. But now a new period is unfolding before him. A new period, totally different. Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? His heart is flooded with love for Christ. Because he saw the 153 fish, he saw that then his failure crosses right across from him. And he said to him, Lord, you know, because he believes that it is his Lord and his God, you know, Lord, that I do love you, that my heart is full of love for you. And the answer is, feed my lambs. My beloved brethren, new things feed my lambs. In continuation he will say, tend my sheep, feed my sheep. But 
the condition always is one. Do you love me more than these? Because if you don't love me, not if you love me a lot, the crucial question is not there, how much do you love me? Foolishly, we say this much, a kilo of love, until the heavens, not such love. We're not talking about such a love in which you have. We're talking about a love which you don't have. For the love who saw your heart, soul, mind and strength, which you cannot have as a man. And none of us have, my brethren, and we know this very, very well. For a love which will be given unto you if you accept to follow me wholly. If it's not given on to you, you will never ever follow me wholly. Many times, I believe all of us, but most of us, I have done it anyway. I thought in my prayer and I said, Lord, I wonder, do I love you as you want me to love you? As your first commandment is, with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. And when I finish this thought, I would say, what am I talking about, Lord? Man, my beloved brethren, cannot have such a love. He cannot. As he cannot have the faith if it's not first given to him as a gift by God. He cannot have love if it's not given to him directly from Christ. The love of God is outpoured in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. And Peter was grieved. And he said, Lord, you know that I love you. What do you ask me for the third time? But there, the great change took place. Now, follow me. Now, truly, you will abandon everything. Not you will abandon everything that's natural, but your heart will be given wholly to me. Your love will be holy to me. Your faith will not be my word and your hope in me, but something much, much greater. Your love will be exclusively for me, because I will give you another kind of spirit. The spirit of power. The spirit of apostleship. The spirit of Christ which cries out, Abba the Father. And Peter made a decision. Fishing came out of his heart for once and for all, his life. Now, he made a steadfast decision given to him by God to follow Christ exactly. But then he saw John Further back, John did not need such a personal intercession, but it was enough for John, the decision of Christ in Peter. He observed all this, but now things must fall into place. A great truth must be revealed to the Church of Christ, and to us with his word. Lord, what about this man? When the Lord said to him, When you die, they will kill you, in that way you will glorify my name. You will glorify my name with your life and with your death, Peter. This is your life, Peter, my glory. What about this man, Lord? Let him be. This is not your job, John. Your job is my footprints, my face, my voice. And Peter accepted this. And John accepted this. And they left Galilee and were found in Jerusalem. And the Holy Spirit came upon them. But now, those disciples were not the disciples after the resurrection. As they were then, reborn and happy. 
but now they were disciples after the decision of Christ in their hearts. My beloved brethren, Caleb, when he was 85, put the other generation, not the first generation which did not believe, but the other generation which did believe in his inheritance in the Mount Hebron. He destroyed the fortified cities. He overcame the Anakim because the Lord was with him. And Jerusalem became the chosen city of God. And which will continue throughout eternity being the chosen city of God. They're in heaven also. Peter, John and the rest of the disciples. Put the first apostolic church in the work of God. But now, the gospel of Jesus Christ is clear and pure. And upon my men servants and maid servants, I will outpour my spirit and they will prophesy. A generation unique. As that generation of the Old Testament, they all entered in the inheritance with Joshua and Caleb. And this generation also, my brethren, is a generation called by God Himself. All, all have one mission. And to all of us, Christ has given a work. But the most important thing of all is all of us to enter richly through the gates in the kingdom of heaven. Let's prepare our hearts therefore, our lives, for the rapture of the church. It's not easy my brethren, it's not a simple thing at all. The Lord is coming, but He will receive a church that will be full of glory. Do you want? Don't look at your empty boat now. You're fishing, fishing, fishing and you haven't caught a thing. Doesn't matter. Look across from you. You will hear the voice of Christ who says to you, have you got any food? He knows that you haven't. But come, because I have everything ready for you. Christ has everything ready, prepared. We only need patience so we can do the will of God, so we can obtain the promises of God. Christ says, I want you to pray and not give up. But he always cries out, Behold, I'm coming quickly. Prepare yourself to answer, Lord your God. Amen.